Hey guys, uh, today I wanted to unveil a little project I've been working on here for a while now. Um, as you may recall, I've set up a Pirani gauge um, instrument that I can use to measure the, uh, the level of vacuum that I'm seeing in the system. Um, but I figured, you know, barometers are used to measure uh, pressures. Of course, usually, usually you're looking at atmospheric pressure or something like that with them. But I figured, why can't you make a very small barometer um, using the right materials and that sort of thing. Why can't you make a barometer that will measure very, very low pressures? Um, and so it turns out uh, there's no reason you can't do that. So what I've got here is an extremely low pressure barometer that is teed into the vacuum chamber. And a couple of things that make this unique are, uh, number one, the working fluid is obviously not mercury. Um, I had to use vacuum oil for this because the pressures that we're seeing in here are down as low as one pascal or less. Um, any other fluid would, would have boiled away long ago, so uh, it, important that you use vacuum oil. Uh, the column is just a glass tube that I've, I've fused closed at the top because that needs to be uh, a perfect seal there. And it's just attached to a little stand to holding it upright. The bottom is submerged in the basin of oil here, and I've placed uh, one centimeter uh, increments along the side of the column. Uh, I'll get into it in a little bit, but each uh, centimeter of fluid height here indicates 90 pascals of pressure. So we have 720 pascals at the top, going all the way down and approaching zero down here. So to give you an idea of what these pressures are like, uh, the second notch from the top that's about the mean surface pressure on Mars, about 620 pascals. Uh, this first mark up from the bottom, about 90 pascals. Uh, that's the kind of pressure that you see at the top of Olympus Mons, largest volcano, largest mountain in the solar system, also on Mars. So uh, that's kind of the range that you see here. Um, and this is a nice tool because it's it's just very simple to use. You just you just look at look at where the fluid is you can see what the pressure is doing. So uh, I thought it would be cool today to show you both devices, the Pirani gauge readout here on the left, the barometer here on the right. Uh, just kind of take a look at, with both of those connected to the system, uh, see, how they, see how they work together. So let's uh, turn on the Pirani gauge and hit the pump. Okay, it looks like we're getting down there in pressure. Um, looks like, uh, I'd say about maybe 70, 75 pascals right now. I'm um, just going to get all the way down to zero because, of course, um, you know, the thing is a perfect vacuum. Um, and because this is keyed into the chamber, there's a little bit more um, air leaking in there just because of the, the um, having that additional structure attached. Uh, now, let's see what happens when I open the lead in drop a little bit. Okay, there we go. Now we have both readings uh, rising. You can see the oil there rising in the column. You can hear the pump sucking a little bit of air. Um, I can actually fine tune the pressure here with this valve, which is pretty cool. So I'll just set it there and it might take a minute to settle down. Um, just kind of reach an equilibrium between the air that's being admitted uh, by the valve versus the air that's being removed with the pump. 
so that level should should settle down. And looks like we're reading uh, six marks up there. Should be about 540 pascals. Now if I close this back down, we'll see. Yeah. There we go, dropping fast. One 180 pascals. Ninety pascals again. So you can see obviously both of these instruments are reflecting the pressure inside the system. Uh, so I think what would be uh, interesting to look at next is actually how these readings relate to each other. So let's take a look at that. So now that we have um, a second instrument that we can measure uh, pressure with, uh, that being the barometer, I thought it would be cool to actually compare the readings from both instruments, um, both simultaneously connected to the system, and uh, see what that, what that data looks like. So the first thing to look at here is the baseline reading on the Prani gauge, and this will be the reading at STP no vacuum at all, and you need to take note of that reading because um, further down the line when you're, when you're analyzing this data, what you need to record is the change in that reading, okay? Because, the, remember, the, the Prani gauge um, ultimately works based on heat. The amount of uh, gas surrounding the filament affects how hot it is, which affects the resistance, which affects the current draw, so ambient temperature will change this number it will change all the readings that you get, so you need to take this baseline first and then record the offset. Record how much that number drops and use that to uh, reach your pressure, okay? So what I did is I measured the pressure in the system with the barometer here, uh, and simultaneously recorded the change from the baseline reading on the Prani gauge. And so uh, what we see with this data is when I graph this given the absolute pressure on the X the change in, in um, current draw on the Y, we get a real nice smooth curve here, okay? And that is the relationship between these two values. Uh, it's a curve because this reading is nonlinear. We can see that very easily here. We have a change of 90 pascals here, very small change in the current draw. Up here, look, we have, we have a change of 90 pascals, much larger change in the current draw. So up here is the steep part of that graph where it's changing rapidly. And down here, it's it's leveling off more. Okay, so so that'll make sense, um, and I'll I'll show you the graph of that data in a minute. So here's that graph I was talking about uh, relating the barometer readings to the uh, Peroni gauge um, readings, and so we can see that this is a, a nice a nice smooth curve. Uh, it's very coherent. Uh, it's very logical when we think about. The way that, that these devices work, uh, the Peroni gauge being non-linear, uh, that's why it has this curve to it. Um, and so this is really useful because this, this website actually gives me an equation, um, an equation that describes this line through the points there. And so I can actually take a reading from either instrument, plug it into that equation, and then solve for what the reading would be on the other instrument. So I can use say just the Peroni gauge, I can plug it in here and then figure out what the actual pressure is in Pascal's, uh, for example. So uh, just some cool, cool little bit of analysis on this data. Um, it tells us that we have good data because if these points were, were uh, kind of spread around randomly, there wasn't any, any sense to their, um, to their placement, uh, that would tell us that, that our data was bad, uh, that something wasn't, wasn't lining up something's wrong with our reading, so uh, this tells us that we have good data as well, which is important for, uh, obviously, being confident in the readings that we're taking with these devices. So, um, so yeah, just uh, cool to take a look at that. Um, I would like to expand this more. I would like to add more data points at, at higher pressures. And what I have here, uh, the problem is just m measuring accurately, uh, say, one kilopascal. Five kilopascals, because that's the below the point where 
just a simple vacuum gauge is going to be reliable, but uh, obviously it's impractical to build a barometer that's three or four times the size uh, of, the I, of the one I have here. Um, so that would take some other means to fill in that, that empty uh, spot in the graph. But uh, for right now, I'm just concerned about the sub one kilopascal region. And this basically has that covered. Uh, so yeah, so this will be useful for us going forwards. So I wanted to take a minute and show you guys how I actually arrived at the uh, pressure index given the height of the fluid in the barometer. So what I did is I started out with the common measurements you see, common um, uh, value for atmospheric pressure in tor, atmos atmospheric pressure in millimeters of mercury height inside a barometer, and the same value uh, in kilopascals here. So what I did is I took the density of mercury and the density of the oil in my, in, in my device, uh, and I divided those to get this multiplication factor. And this basically means that the mercury is 14.67 time, times more dense than the oil. Um, now that leads us to the conclusion that the oil column will be 14.67 times taller than a mercury column at the same pressure because of that difference in density. Then from there we can just multiply by the height of the mercury column at STP, 760 millimeters of mercury here, um, we get 11.15 meters of oil at STP. Now if we just take the STP value of pressure in kilopascals, divide that by the height of our oil column at STP, we get this value of 9 kilopascals per meter of oil height which is 0.09 kilopascals per centimeter of oil height. And finally, uh, the value that I'm using, uh, 90.6 pascals per centimeter of oil height. And so as I've graduated the barometer column in one centimeter increments, um, each centimeter in height that the oil is above the surface uh, means that you have 90 pascals of pressure um, that the barometer is experiencing. And this, this process, kind of starting from these, these standard measurements, standard units, and just incorporating the density of whatever working fluid you have, uh, this, this is a, a universal process. You can use that for any fluid that you might have, any pressure you might be working with. Um, it's nice because you don't have to be concerned with the cross-sectional area of the column at all. Uh, that, that has no effect on the actual reading that you get it's just the height of the fluid. So I, I like this process um, and it's, uh, it's, it's universal uh, basically for whatever you might be working with. So, so that, that, that's the process I went through guys.